Hi everyone, it's Ashley Gronwald with Hunter Row Real Estate. Thanks for joining us today. This is my friend, um, Lesland, who's here with me today. I'm so glad that she could join us because she's got so much to share and I can't wait to hear everything that she does. She's gonna talk a little bit about just what school looks like for her family, which is a little bit different. Um, and I know there's lots of different school options out there, but this is one that I am particularly interested in. So I asked her if she'd be willing to come and spend some time with me today just sharing what this looks like for her family. But really, we're just going to take some time just to talk through a non-traditional type of schooling option. So if you have school-age kids or getting ready to have kids entering that season of life, this will be a, hopefully a really helpful conversation just to get you thinking about some different options. So Leslin, if you wouldn't mind just to introduce yourself, tell them a little about, about you, your family, and then we'll jump into some questions about the schooling opportunity. Sure thing. Uh, I'm Leslin. My husband ministers locally here in the Raleigh-Durham area. We have three kids. Biologically, we have a 14-year-old and 11-year-old. We have an adult adopted daughter who's 29 and getting married in a week and a half. Yeah, we live right here in Durham, and my husband does ministry amongst unreached people groups. So that's who we are. Very cool. And then you do work outside of the home as well. Do you want to share a little bit about what that looks like for you as a mom? Yeah. So I work half time. So 20 hours a week okay. working for a mission board, the International Mission Board. My background is financial planning. So I handle yeah their foundation and corporate relations. So busy doing that about four hours a day. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. Because I think some of the people that might be listening, um, you know, either work outside of home or, you know, spend most of their time working in the home. So this will be good just to hear from your perspective, knowing that you're doing both. You're doing a little bit yeah. of both, which is awesome. So essentially, you have decided as a family that this non-traditional type of schooling model, it was the best fit for you. So I guess my first question is, how did you stumble across it? And how did you decide that this was the best option for your family? And then tell us about this kind of hybrid schooling option. Right. OK, so the journey began when our oldest uh, that was in our home, our 14 year old at the time, he was two. And my husband's been in ministry ever since he was born, which is non conventional, non conventional work hours. And we knew mm -hmm. the whole like nine to five thing wasn't going to be a reality. He worked a lot in the evenings and weekends. But home discipleship and teaching our kids about God's word was really important to us. And just in sharing with our kids different values we had. And we determined that with any school model um, that was your typical Monday through Friday model would not work for our family if they were going to really know their dad. Um, mm -hmm. And so we began praying that God would provide an alternative educational model for us. At the time, there were no schools of this model in North Carolina. It's called a university model school, and it models a university um, where you go to, to class a couple days a week and then you take your assignments home on the others. So we heard about one in Missouri. So we just started praying, Lord, would you begin to open up university model schools in North Carolina? Mm -hmm. At the time, we were able to be a part of a team of five families that started the first one in North Carolina, which was in Mooresville, uh, North Carolina, outside of Charlotte. And our son went there for kindergarten, first and second. Then we made the move to Durham to work with the refugee population here. And that was such a huge loss for us to lose a school that we had planted and poured so much of our life into. Um, and so we moved here. Then we homeschooled for four years. Um, and then the Lord gave us a vision to be a part of starting one again in Durham. Um, and at the time, my friend Georgiana had started a school like this in Apex. So we tethered to them. But that's kind of the journey we wanted to make make sure that we could still uh, both work jobs, but have a schooling model where we were not responsible fully for all of the schooling, but have more flexibility with time. So, yeah. So it sounds like, again, kind of why I called it hybrid is that you get the benefits of both worlds, being in a classroom setting with other kids, but then also having some at home curriculum that's happening through yep. the parents. And again, I love that you described that. That's why it's called a university model. Kind of like when you're in college, you go Monday, yep. Wednesday, Friday to class, but Tuesday and Thursday, you're working through assignments or homework. So that yep. makes sense. So for your family, how do you juggle this school model as a mom since you're working 20 hours a week, but also having them in school? And then what does it look like on the days that they're home? 
when you're yeah. are you involved in that curriculum or are they old enough now that they do that curriculum on their own at home? How does that look? Yeah. So it's a really beautiful model for a mom that is working um, because I know this because between the two schools, I was homeschooling for four years. And when you, when you homeschool, you're responsible for reporting to the state. Your school, your child is registered with the state as a homeschool student. And I'm kind of an overachiever. So it was hard for me um, to try to make sure I got everything they needed with all their art and music and everything else. In addition to that, as a working mom, it was just difficult for us with our personalities of just being super diligent um, in mm -hmm. that way. And so the beautiful thing about the university model school it, and what differentiates it from a homeschool co-op. So we did two homeschool co-ops every time every year we homeschooled the onus was still completely on me and those were more like enrichment activities where when my children are gone to school the teachers are fully responsible for all of the lesson planning for the entire week my kids are no longer registered with the state under homeschool students they're actually registered as private school students which means that school and its accreditation is responsible for making sure my kids get everything that they need so it took all of that responsibility of planning planning, picking curriculum off of my plate. And so I approach my week, I can look on the computer on Monday morning and I can look and see, okay, for my daughter, um, she goes to school two days a week from kindergarten to six. My son goes a third day a week now that he's in seventh grade. I look and the teacher has everything beautifully planned and all those like messy art and science things I don't want to do at home. They do those in school right. and get all that done. So, and then when they're home, we just log on to the computer. We see what um, the teacher wants us to accomplish. Oftentimes she's done enrichment videos that kind of review the material. And then I just implement what she's already given me now at my kid's age. This year they'll be going into sixth and ninth. They're almost completely independent. And there are certain things I enjoy doing. So I'll get in on certain conversations about topics or I'm there to reinforce more of a tutor role than that whole responsibility of all the planning, all the implementation, all the testing. And another thing I really love about it is I, you know, when you're a mom, you can either go one of two ways and think my child is perfect or think, oh, my child isn't getting this right. Whereas the teacher is giving me a view of, of how my child is doing in the scope of the typical child their age because they have a classroom full of those. And that helps me feel confident that my kids are where they need to be. Yeah. yeah. And what is a typical size of classroom in this model or in the yeah. school you guys are in? That would be yeah. um, one question. And then the next one leading up to it just how, what would you say the pros and cons of as a homeschooling mom in the past, what would be the pros and cons of that versus the university model? Because I'm sure there's pros and cons for both. But this yeah. one works the best for your family. Right. And we're very supportive of however the Lord leads every family. So right. I always try to use a lot of caution because um, I know that there are a lot of people that have strong opinions that certain educational models are superior to others. And we just never want to have that heart posture. Yeah. Um, and so I want to make sure I communicate that as well. Um, mm -hmm. But at our school, the maximum class size is 12 okay. in the lower school and up to 16 in the upper school, lower school being K through six upper okay. school being seven through 12th and that larger that larger class size in the older grades we do a lot of socratic seminar and lots of discussion that larger class size really facilitates a better environment for that in awesome. the older grades yeah so coming out of homeschooling into this model um i think probably one of the biggest struggles that coming out of that pack of homeschool moms several of us kind of came together out of homeschooling to the school probably the biggest attractant is for folks that are very control love to be in control mm -hmm. of everything regarding their kids uh, education particularly they have a writing curriculum that they do not want to deviate from you kind of got to die to that right okay. and know that the administration has prayed through what works better and um, for a, a model like ours it may be a phenomenal curriculum but it may not be something easy for a parent and teacher to in tandem teach mm -hmm. so that's probably one of the biggest struggles from homes uh, to come from homeschooling in addition to when you homeschool if you come across a lesson that you just don't feel like is pertinent or important you just throw the thing out in mm -hmm. our school that's a zero you know when a teacher gives you an assignment you do it or you get a zero and um part of that can be seen as a negative but i've tried to tell my kids that is the real world uh, the yeah. real world is um 
getting lots of rules and expectations, responsibilities that you may or may not get these beautiful butterfly feelings of getting to do, but you just do them because that's the real world. So mm -hmm. I think that's been one of the greater benefits for us is that structure of not having to plan everything mm -hmm. um, and knowing that I have qualified, trained, professional mm -hmm. teachers doing that. Another thing for me, as my kids have gotten older, I realize nobody, no one on planet earth is an expert in every subject. You can't be. There is no professor or teacher at a school is teaching at the high school level that is expert at English and the expert at math and the expert at social studies and the expert at biology and the expert at Spanish. No one does that. And so as a homeschool mom, I was beginning to feel stressed as my oldest got into the middle school years. Um, so that's been really neat is to benefit Benefit from people's giftings um, and experience in those different categories I just simply didn't have. So that's been really great for me too. So those have been big benefits. Of course, then you have the social benefits and my kids learning to hang in that kind of out in the world environment and learning and having other adults speak into their relationships and um, the social aspect. My kids are loving that. And honestly, I have an introvert and an extrovert and I thought it was my extrovert that needed it most because he's so social. But actually I found out it was my introvert who was perfectly happy being at home, actually socially needed that nudge to be able to figure out how to in, insert themselves into a social scenario and then thrive in that social scenario. So that was a big shock for me. That's awesome to think through too, because I think about just how different our kids can be mm -hmm. and what we think they need. But like you said, this model, has helped both of them for different reasons, which is awesome. Yeah. And yeah. then what does what does a, the classroom setting look like? I went to public school, so is it a common structure of that? Is there sporting teams? What a part, you know, yeah. those pieces of schooling does the university model play in, a part in? Yeah, so the university model is a part of a larger consortium um, out of Texas, and, and there's a, a typical pattern uh, that schools work on toward accreditation and then towards building those extracurriculars. So, for instance, the university model school that we were able to plant back around 2010, that school now has and 10 years old, they have all of these elaborate musicals where they're renting out the local like convention center and putting on these huge musicals and sporting teams, but it takes a while to get there. Sure. So for our school here, Heritage, we're about to enter our fourth year, praise yeah. be to the Lord. Yeah. And um, in our case, what we're doing right now is what we call enrichments in the afternoon. So we have like a worship band, which is a really cool way for kids to get involved in using their musical talents. We've had like a running club we've had where you can do like this little tennis clinic. So the vision, of course, is to follow the typical trajectory for university model school and have all those things. We were going to be putting on a full scale Beauty and the Beast um, in the spring, my daughter was a part of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory production that was held at um, Summit Apex last year. So uh, we're getting there and we're building. We definitely have uh, leadership that has the skill set and capacity to do that. But actually, it's kind of fun to be on the builder side, on the shaper side. When you're here from the beginning, you don't benefit from decades of experience, but you get to speak into what's happening. And that's a special role, too. That's awesome. And then what does your relationship look like with the teacher? Is it more involved than a traditional public school where you know the teacher, but they are fully responsible for the yeah. education? Now that you're partnering with them, is that a closer mm -hmm. relationship? What does communication look like with the teacher? Yeah, that has been really, really special for us. Um, my husband and I both were um, public schooled, and that's all we really knew. You know, that's what most right. people did. This model certainly was not in the state of North Carolina. But this is a really unique and special thing in, in that university model schools are Christian schools. And uh, for our family and our school, the one that we've selected is very, very heavily focused on family discipleship. And so our teachers make it very clear. And whenever I've overheard things going on at teacher training, it's always the children's hearts for Christ come first mm -hmm. and academics come second. So first of all, when I look at their teacher, I look at them as somebody that I know is going to be speaking the same messaging into my child's life that I am, mm -hmm. that, they, that the heart of my child comes before anything else and whether or not that means my child needs extra compassion in an area or if my child needs an extra nudge that maybe mom and dad aren't giving them. Right. Um, and so they're co-discipling my kids. So I'm very close with 
uh, my kids' teachers. They're an open book. They're open and available. So on the days that my kids are doing work at home, those teachers have office hours. So I have access to them every day, not all day long like a feast, but they usually have an hour or two where I can communicate with them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're all open. I have most of their cell phone numbers in my phone, easy text away. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just really special. But most of all, because I know that that person's invested in my child's heart, because if I can tell you don't love my child and my child knows that they're not going to learn from you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that even though the world may be giving them messages that Josh and I are not giving them or that we don't feel like are biblical, we know that these other people that they idolize and really look up to are those individuals at least are sending the same messaging that we are. That's awesome. And then what is the um, schedule like? I know you were saying in the lower school, they're two days a week and then the upper school is at three days a week. Mm -hmm. so, and what is the time that they're in the classroom for that, those different ages? Yeah. So uh, K through six are there on Mondays and Wednesdays, seventh grade, you add seventh and up, you add Thursday to that. And they arrive around 830. So classes start at 845, whether that be a devotion, your own class or where we have this thing called Koinonia, where it's multiple grades coming together, teaching the older students to lead Bible study to the younger students. So they start their day at 845 and then they end around 330. And during that time, um, a lot of the activities might look like you would in a traditional school environment. You have a teacher who's instilling information and heart passion for the world. Yeah, at our school. And it's interesting because we don't have a Bible class. And a lot of people think that's interesting. You don't have a Bible class, but it's because we believe that the Bible touches every subject. And so that's mm -hmm. taught um, intertwined in every subject. But and on those days, I try to during the school year, I am knocking out eight hours of work a day on those days. So if you look at it at the end of it, I've got most of my work week done during the two days that both of my kids are on campus. And that frees me up as a mom to be able to really pour in and be engaged with them when they are home. And I just feel like I'm a better um, homeschool mom uh, and a, a, just a better mom all around as far as uh, not feeling like I'm sidelining my kids all the time because of this school model. Right. And so I would assume some people might have the question of the accredit accreditation part of it. Is there any hiccups there between what the school has to offer for kids trying to get into college. I know you're not there yet necessarily, but is it similar that the school, the colleges look at this as a private school, like you were saying, and so it, it's not a negative at all or any concern for a parent? Absolutely not. And because that was one of my questions, because that's important to me and to my husband. And so we asked about accreditation. The school's actually kind of zooming through accreditation as quickly as is possible. It takes time to be accredited. There are minimum time periods. Our school is being accredited um, as quickly as we can be. Um, so we're already certified at this point. And so uh, we're working through that uh, with the state of North Carolina. And the cool thing is the school will produce a transcript. And so at the end of the day, it's very different than when I was homeschooling because it's, it's hard for someone to discern necessarily how grades were ascertained um, mm -hmm. from a variety of different modalities. But for, for this model, at least, I know that the school will assign quality points and grades and that colleges do acknowledge. And it, the interesting thing is university model schools, when they graduate out of, in our case, Heritage Leadership Academy and, and a university looks at their transcript, they will look at them as a private school student. Most of these universities don't even know what a university model school student is. They just know that my child, every child in North Carolina is registered with, with the state as either a homeschool student, a private school student, or a public school student. And our students are all registered as private school students. So they will be viewed as a child coming out of a five day a week private school. And then I'm sure this is a question people are thinking the, the cost of this in comparison yeah. to a private, an actual private school. How mm -hmm. does that compare? Yeah. So I feel like it's extremely cost effective. At least it's been workable for our family. And, you know, my husband's in ministry and I'm working for a nonprofit. And um, so we don't have two magnanimous incomes in our home. So, yeah, I encourage you to look at our, our school's website, but it, it'll be three thousand something for younger kids and usually about 5,000 for the older kids and um, which for middle and high school that's very very affordable yeah so I feel like that's very affordable as well as um, our founder Georgiana Wiest uh, has worked so hard she worked really really hard to get us qualified to get the disabilities grant and the opportunity scholarship so a lot of our students are there on financial aid so in fact if you can get the opportunity scholarship in north carolina which many many people can it's forty two hundred dollars a year in coverage so you can go to our school completely for free and then 
as a whole, what would you say, how has this school model impacted your parenting? I think you've alluded to it a little bit as we've talked, but how have you seen Josh and your parenting as a result of this model? I have found this model hasn't changed how we parented, but what it has done is it has opened the chute and the pathway for us to continue to implement our family vision as our kids have gotten older. Yeah, And I think that's really critical because as kids get older and they get involved in extracurriculars like uh, sports and music and just wanting to get together with their friends, the dynamic can really shift for a family mm -hmm. and the friendship between siblings can really um, very slowly gravitate a little bit further away. Sure. And so for us, we had a very fixed family vision from a very early age. And yes, that's morphed slightly in its implementation, um, maybe in the orthopraxy of it. But the actual family vision really hasn't changed that much. But we were concerned as they got older, how are we going to continue to have that family time? Mm -hmm. And this model has just opened up the pathway for us to continue to be able to do that. Awesome. And to continue to have that family time while at the same time they're socially integrated, they're getting this phenomenal education under certified teachers that are setting the pathway. So it is truly a beautiful model. And I and my kids are still really close. And I really love that because a lot of times a boy going into high school here next week and a girl going into middle school next week aren't close anymore, but mine still are. Mm -hmm. And I attribute that partially to them having the quantity of yeah. time, you know, because you can't plan. My dad used to always say you can't plan quality time with people. Quality time pops up accidentally in the midst of the quantity of time. So this model has allowed us to have the quantity of time to facilitate the quality time. And then is the school calendar a more traditional calendar, not the year round type? It's actually really cool. It's my favorite. It's called a modified year round okay. um, in that in that it's got a traditional feel with a truncated summer with larger breaks during the year. Okay. So I like that um, in the past. So basically like my kids start next week in the past, they've had two weeks in October and two weeks in March. I think this year there's one week in October and two weeks in March and then three weeks over Christmas. So we get an extra few weeks during the school year when the weather is nice. Um, also part of the vision of our founder, Georgiana, was that she knew that she felt like the mission field was full of people during the summertime, but there weren't a lot of opportunities for people to go minister amongst people that need to hear the gospel during the rest of the year. So she carved out these times for family to be able to do that. So we really like it. So the kids have a shorter summer, but they redeem a couple of those weeks during the school year. We love that. That's awesome. I love that too. Um, and so as a whole, is there, I know you've alluded to this as, as well as we've been talking, but have you seen your family thrive, maybe individually, your kids, but in this model, particularly, you've, again, mentioned it from the introversion side to the extroversion side of it, you getting more quality time at home with them, um, you being able to work and get that all done while they're in the classroom or on campus, which is awesome, and then be totally available for them. Any yeah. other things that you would say this model has allowed your family to thrive as a result of it? Yeah, all of those things you just mentioned have been a real blessing. I have found incredible community. I think I was a little afraid to leave the homeschool world because there's a lot of community there. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, okay, we're all going to drop off, scatter, and do the responsibilities. I'm running home, tick, tick, tick at work. And at least for our school, uh, there's a dedicated team of moms where we work really hard to provide opportunities for, for the moms to get gather and to know one another and to raise our kids in the way of the Lord together. That's been very easy to do and is very much intact. Some of my dearest and best friends um, are fellow moms at this school. So that was a beautiful blessing for me that I never anticipated. In fact, I have as many, if not more close friends in this model than I did before, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's been, that's been really beautiful. And just to reiterate again, having other adults, in a place of authority that are speaking the same spiritual truth into my kids' lives, especially at the age where my kids are, that middle school age, that's just absolutely critical. And it's outside of the church context. I think sometimes you anticipate somebody at church is going to say the same thing my parents are saying, but this takes it to another dimension. Right. So, yeah. Is, are there a couple locations throughout the triangle that people can go to? Share with us a little bit about that. Yeah. So right now, uh, our main campus, uh, they consider it the main campus. I don't even know if they would consider it main anymore. The founding campus, I should say, yeah. 
Apex. Uh, we have a partnership with the Summit Church. And so Summit Apex hosts the lower school there. And then the upper kids go over to a, a nearby church as well. And Hope Community Church in Durham. We're at uh, Summit Briar Creek, which is super handy. We've got students. Well, last year we had a family coming from Clayton, so it's super easy access to 540, 147, 40. It's just super handy for a lot of different areas. So that's where we are right now. And uh, the founder at one point and at many points has mentioned expansion over time as the Lord leads. And it's a big deal to start a new school scamp campus because it's not a, a co-op. It's a, a school that takes time for the government to approve. But that is the vision of the school is to expand so that accessibility um, mm -hmm. is also really important to us. And then I know it's a little bit late now because school's starting, but are there spots available or is there a waiting list right now? Do you know what the capacity is right now? So if you want to see exactly which grades have availability, you can go to heritageacademy-nc.org. Um, There's a banner at the top that tells you which grades have spots um, for a typical year. I would be cautious to wait too long to apply to Heritage. When enrollment opens up in January, if you think you want your child there, especially in one of the lower grades, get on it immediately because those wait lists will get really long, really fast. Um, it's oftentimes there's more space in the upper grades um, than there are in the lower grades. So take a look if you're interested. Okay. And I think you had mentioned too, as of right now, there the locations that they have could be expanding. So keep your eye open for that and you have not gotten to a point where the kids have, have graduated out yet right only four years old at this point um but that will come over the next few yeah. years which is exciting is yeah. there um again my kids are not quite at this age yet but definitely on my radar is there anything that you would tell a mom that's starting to think through schools that I didn't ask you or that we didn't talk about that would help them make this decision between private, public, or this university type of model? I would encourage you to uh, drown out the white noise. Um, mm -hmm. of there, As I alluded to before, there are people with very strong opinions that one educational model is superior to another. And there are lots of neat educational models and to pray through what God's leading your family to do, be secure, and what God has called you to do, you don't have to justify to everybody why you do what you do, but follow what the Lord is leading your family to do and then get in that vein and be solid and firm about what he's called you to do. And the Lord will lead you. Well, I've put the Heritage um, Academy's website up on um the screen. So if people want to go check that out, um, you can see the openings that are still open for the different grades the different locations. If you have questions, please send those in. I can get them to Leslin and she can answer them. Um, but thanks for spending time with me, Leslin. This was so yeah. helpful. I'm so excited about this, that it's here. Like you said, you know, not all areas have this model to even choose right. from. I'm so thankful that you helped in getting this going um, with the founder, which is awesome. And again, if you are watching this after um, we've aired it, please send those questions in and we'll get back to you as quick as we can and excited about this journey for your family and maybe lots of other families. So thank you, Leslie. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for letting me share, Ashley. You're welcome. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.